We continue on the green here at Talladega Super Speedway in the Aaron's 312. Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr. continue to be the top two guys. Couple of cautions already in the event, Brad. Kind of uh, event filled so far, and we still haven't seen the big one. No, Alan, we've seen a couple of, of, of individual scrapes, but I think what happens is that they go on. And everyone who's been here for a number of years knows that it's the guys' patience that start to wear thin and create that opportunity for the big one. So as time goes on, as we get closer to that 59 lap mark, I think you're going to see that opportunity for the big one to occur a little bit more frequently. Speaking of making plans there are three Wallace's running in the top seven could they consider linking up Dave you know if we had had Mike Wallace uh, in the draft earlier today that little mock draft we did who might he have chosen listen to his radio it was at 64 66 we can we can lead this race and we can all win this race if they'll help but we'll all help each other there for a call go to their spotters up there okay I'll go to their crew chief right next to me just follow you follow in a row that's all we're going to finish here that's Mike Wallace in the seven car, Stephen Wallace in the 66, and David Stremme in another car owned by Rusty. Oh, we got a spin. Oh, it's it's a tap from Wallace. Right behind you. Oh, the big one in turn one, heavy contact. Cars in the wall. Stephen Wallace heavily damaged. There comes Kyle Krisiloff down. David Rudiman involved. Oh, heavy damage on Stephen Wallace's uh, Chevy. He was having such a great run. And Kyle Busch has damage on the right front of his Toyota. Kyle Busch continues to have problems finishing this race. He tried a different strategy, but he's still he caught up in this race. He's checking off pit road first, probably. Yeah, Rudiman has a lot of damage with his Toyota. You see Kyle Busch coming in behind him, so he will not make it four in a row here. But, you know, again, we, we talked about this. We set it up from the beginning. It's Carl Edwards. Carl car. Edwards. We saw Carl Edwards with his hand out the windows. They were coming by us here, headed to turn one. He was waving. There's a 21 car, Stephen Light. Kenny Wallace in the 28 car as uh, Stephen Light gets the uh, children's car fired, tries to pull it away. See the intensity level coming yeah. up on we these saw guys. saw Mike Wallace look like he was going below David uh, Rudiman right here, but they ran up on a slower car. Wow. Right. Wow. Wow. That's Kevin LePage's 61 that Carl Edwards went up across the back of. And then it all broke loose behind him. Car slipping and sliding. Kelly Byers involved. Brad Keselowski, watch again. Oh, they, you see you what know, happened here. This 61 was not up to speed. And no, he was it's almost like, uh, you know, he, he, these guys moved over and didn't see him. Had no idea that he was coming out. You know, they did. I'm sure that the spotters up there saw him on the apron. They weren't expecting him to come and join back right in front of the leaders. That's just a very unfortunate situation and, and a mistake on Kevin's uh, part and his spotter. You know, quite honestly, somebody's got to be telling him and he has to know that these leaders are coming because he just messed up a lot of cars and driver's chances. That's the reason that NASCAR has the rule that you have to keep all four tires below that yellow line before you get to turn one. We saw Clint Boyer get penalized for running his car up on the racetrack, and that's the reason, because you can cause a wreck. That was a bad wreck right there, caused by a big mistake. Carl Edwards, thankfully, with that hard impact, able to walk away from his car, reigning nationwide series champion, and Stephen Wallace uh, climbing out of his heavily damaged Chevrolet after such a great run. Kelly Byers in the 47 car. He has climbed out and away. There is uh, Carl a uh, NASCAR requires that any driver that has any kind of contact on the track goes directly to the care center. That's a good rule because you never know. You want to be going and be checked out. Well, this is the one we talked about, the big one at Talladega. Oh, no, no, the two there. Say hi, say hi, go high, go high. Go high. Yep. Now David Rudiman's onboard camera. We'll show you what David saw. There's Mike Wallace. Kyle Busch thought he could hang back and avoid trouble, but it was not to be. He Go was to. involved as well. These guys at this point are going through the trial and just racing as they normally would. Yeah, you see that 88? Not expecting Slow one down low. Slow one down low. Watch this. Get, watch this. It's a huge mistake on Kevin LePage's part to pull up front of this group. Good. 33 car, Kale Gale driving for Kevin Delena Harvey. Back it down, 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 come on down, come on down. 
Kid from Mobile, Alabama, coming home to drive uh, on his home racetrack in a nationwide car for the first time. He was involved. Again, the 61 car. Now, what's Carl Edwards? Looking up across a racetrack from turn one, there comes a Reed Sorensen just sliding right over the camera. Right into your living room as these cars come by at 180 miles an hour. DJ, in terms of Carl Edwards and how much time or how little time he had to react, what is that like in the car when you when you suddenly there you look up and there's another car sitting there and you're you're running 100 miles an hour faster? Yeah, it, it, there's nothing that you can do. And obviously Carl had no idea that that car was going to pull up on the racetrack. You, you really can't see anything in front of these cars, so you have no idea. You saw Mike Wallace was making a move to go to the inside of David Rudeman. He shot back to the right when he saw the car pull up on. I'm sure it took them all by surprise, the ones that could see. But it's a terrible feeling. You know, a lot, most of the time, you're, you see that happening as you're going through an accident. But this is just very, very unfortunate that these guys were doing such a great job having a great race and, and then to have something like this to happen. So, you know, we're seeing that, that right now these guys can't work on these cars uh, under the red flag condition. They, they can look at them and see what they need to, to uh, what tools they're going to need, what all they're going to need to fix, but they, they are not allowed to, to work this time. So it's just a, a very unfortunate situation and one that really could have and should have been avoided. Yeah, no excuse for that kind of an accident right there because we, there's rules in place. NASCAR has strict rules on these cars staying below that yellow line until they get to the corner. And, uh, you know, Kevin should have stayed below that line. Latest count is uh, at least 14 cars sustained some significant damage. Uh, two or three others may have minor fender damage. And again, they cannot work on these cars uh, during the red flag. A lot of uh, debris will need to be picked up down in turns one and two as we are under a red flag condition at Talladega. It's what everybody dreads here at Talladega, the big one. And it took out as many as 16 cars, lap 70 in turn one, hard impact. Back the with more updates in just a moment. The ring of fire.